Hi, this is Sechua here. I'm a Twitter for accounting. If you're watching this, you are definitely a better place. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button right there. And also make sure that you share this lesson with your friends. Encourage them to subscribe to this channel. Remember that it is free to do so and you don't definitely have to pay anything. With that out of the way, in this morning's lesson, I'm going to be focusing on how to prepare the retained income note. This is one of the most important notes that has got a lot of marks. And this is where most learners, I believe, can end marks. And um, I'll be looking at also some of the things that you can be able to use to freely and quickly be able to complete this. So now let's get what the same we should do here. We have some information from Zazi LTD and they're saying that Zazi LTD supplies and installs different types of solar panels at a fixed price. You are provided with information for the financial year and that's 30 June 2023. Now, when we do our retained income, our financial uh, year is very important because this is going to help us to identify when are we going to start our year as well as when are we going to end. So now remember if our year is ending on the 31st, um, on the 30th of June 2023, we need to understand when does that particular year end. Um, I hope that makes sense. So we need to understand it's that it ends on 30 June 2023. But the question that we should have is that when does this year end? And according to, to, to this, our year ends on 30 June 2023 and it's going to start on 1 July um 2022 very important for us to be able to establish this as it's going it is going to lead us now let's go to the information that has got to do with the retained income note so that we can easily complete it now um when you go to your in retained income note always start by checking um what you are given in your answer sheet for the retained income this will help you to be able to um save time and also be able to finish quickly now when you look at this one of the most important things that we should be able to do it is the structure so it is adv advisable that when you do this start with your structure first and then after that you can go and look for the figures now we know that the format says the balance at the beginning of the year and it also says that we are going to have net profit after tax so you write that net profit after tax and then we know that we also have um our repurchase of shares and in terms of ordinary dividends we know that this repurchase of shares it should be our it should be bracketed because it is an outflow of money now we also check in terms of ordinary share dividends remember that you are going to have um paid and um the declared ones the declared ones are the ones that are promised at the end of the year with the hope that they will be paid next day now you go and check in your question paper what do you have that you can now insert so if you look at this we need to start by looking at the trial balance and here when we look at the trial balance we are looking for one of the things either shareholders for dividends or the ordinary share dividends ordinary share dividends will represent the paid amount of the dividends and then the shareholders for dividends will represent the declared amount which is also what is owed to the shareholders so if you look at this you'll realize that we are given shareholders for dividends which is 260,000. and then when it's like this you just go there quickly and insert it so we're going to go to our declared amount and write 260,000. now if you look at this you'll realize then that then we have the total of the ordinary share dividends, but we don't have the paid amount. So you can simply get your paid amount by taking your total dividends of um, 440,000 and then you subtract uh, 260,000 and then it will give you um, the interim dividend that has been paid. And then from there, you are done looking at this part. So let's see, 440,000, then we subtract um 260,000 and then according to this our interim will be 180,000 so we'd have 100 180,000 here and then you're done with this part but i will also try and show you one of the methods that you can verify if this is correct and then from there we move on with our information to find out what else are they saying to us now um if you continue with the transaction um, you'll realize that there are transactions that are in relation to the 
share capital and dividends and this is the information that you need according to this they're saying that the authorized share capital uh is three million ordinary shares so meaning that the maximum number of shares that we can issue to our shareholders is three million and here they've given us the date and also the details so they're saying that when the year started on the first of july one million five hundred thousand ordinary shares were, were in issue so to be able to avoid any confusion what you do when you get that information immediately you draw a timeline so that it can help you to analyze your information so according to this remember our year starts in july so we have um july august september october november december january february and march april may june and they're saying that when we started here we had Yes, this information is very important to us because it's going to help us to be able to trace the movement of shares. So let's continue with the transaction. Now, here they're saying that on the 31st of December uh, 2022, an interim dividend of 12 cent per share was declared and paid. Now, remember, if you look at this, we don't have any other dividends, uh, any other shares that we issued before the the the, the, the payment of the um interim dividend so it means that we would pay the dividends on the number of shares that we had at the beginning of the year so let's see we have one million five hundred thousand shares so if we say one million five hundred thousand shares and then we multiply it by 0 0.12 which is 12 cents it will give us 108 so this is the easiest way that you can also get that interim dividend that i showed when i was uh, recording that shareholders for dividends so if it's not given to you like that this is one of the ways that you can use to verify if that amount that you wrote there is correct okay and then we are done with this and then we move on with the transactions now here they're saying that on the first of march shares were repurchased at 100 150 the average share price accurately calculated on that day was 135 cents so now here's what we need to know uh we know that um the repurchase of shares that is taking place um it is taking place on the first of march but we know that after those new shares were issued um we don't have any other after those shares that were repurchased we don't have any other share as that were issued so what we know is that then uh we need to check how many shares are we going to have at the end of the year here they've done justice to you because they gave you the total repurchase price okay and then they also gave you the average price which means that you also need to look for the difference and when we check the difference between 150 and 135 let's see how much we'll get so let's see um so if we say one one run fifty minus one run thirty-five. Um let's see how much it's going to give us. So according to this, um we are supposed to get something like that's fifteen cents. So we're supposed to get fifteen cents. So we know that the difference is fifteen cents. This fifteen cent is going to be crucial uh in us helping to calculate the in the, the correct retained income. So we will keep this in mind. But we know that now the average share price uh, is one hundred thirty five cent. Very important for us. But we need to check what else do we have now. Let's look if we are given the ordinary share capital. So now if you go back to your question paper, you will see that um, you can also check on your answer sheet just to see if what you are saying is correct. So let's check on our answer sheet. The ordinary share capital at the end of the year is 1755000 And this is given to us also in the trial balance, if you remember. So what can we do? We can take um, that 1755000 So we we'll take one million. 755,000 and then we divide it by 135. This will give us the number of shares that have been issued to date. So 1,755,000 uh, divided by 1.35, it is giving us 1,300,000 shares. So which means that at the end of the year, the issued shares were 1,300,000. But remember, this is only at the end of the year. So it doesn't give you uh 
the, 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 the measures that were brought back but we are going to analyze it in such a way that it will help us to get those shares so here at the end of the year we are sitting at one million um three hundred thousand so we just wait for this program to respond so it's one million three hundred thousand we are sitting at one million three hundred thousand but remember on the first of march it was a repurchase of shares so if we can check from one million five hundred thousand to one million that you are supposed to use um, on the retained income so we'll do it like that so let's go there quickly so for the repurchase of shares um we will say two hundred thousand multiply by that difference that we got remember this is the money that they are going to borrow from the retained income so if we say two hundred thousand uh, two hundred thousand multiply by 15 cents it is going to give us thirty thousand. so which means that um those that that money that had to be borrowed from the retained income to pay for those shares is um thirty thousand. and then from that this is what you need to check uh net profit after tax and you also don't have the balance at the beginning of the year so check what are you given on your adjustments and when we go to our adjustments you will see that we have something about the income tax so here they're saying that the income tax for the financial year was accurately calculated as three hundred and nine thousand. now this is the tax that we were supposed to pay according to the assessments that were done by sars and they're telling us that the income tax is calculated as 30 percent of the net profit so now this is what we need to do we know that the net profit before tax is always 100 percent so which means that if income tax is 30 percent of the nbt now it means that um the remaining 100 minus stage which gives us 70 will be our net profit after tax so when we calculate we will use the uk method um, this is the amount that is known to us this is the percentage of the amount that is known to us and this is our unknown percentage so whatever that is unknown to us will always be at the top because that's what we are looking for so what we're going to do uh, in our written income we are going to say 70 over 80 70 over 80 multiply by 309,000 and this will give us our net profit after tax remember that 70 percent it what remains after tax was deducted so let's do it like that so if you say 70 divided by 30 multiply by 309,000, it is going to give us you 721,000. so we are getting 721,000 as our net profit so now we have almost everything that we need but we don't have the balance at the beginning of the year so what can we do to get this balance at the beginning of the year we can simply work um, from the bottom and go to the top and when it's like this it means that where there is a positive and uh, we are going to put a minus where there is a minus we're going to put a plus so here if we do that we would say this amount um plus this amount plus this amount minus this one and it will give us the opening balance why am i changing the signs this is because we are doing a reversal so meaning that we are reversing everything that was done we are working from the bottom from 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 the bottom to the top hence we are changing the signs so we'd say one million and forty five thousand um plus four hundred and forty thousand and then we also plus the thirty thousand and then we 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 uh, we minus seven hundred and twenty one thousand and the answer that we are getting is seven hundred and ninety four thousand so which means that our opening balance is supposed to be seven hundred and 94,000. This is how you are supposed to do that particular written income question. And once you, once you got this, uh, this balance has already been entered for you in the balance sheet. But remember, you need to understand the notes before you go to 
the balance sheet and this is how um, we are supposed to do that written income now grade 12 please remember that this question um, you when you are given your balance sheet there's no way you will not have this question that is based on the written income and the ordinary share capital note these are the most common questions there's no way you will not have any of them one way or another you will have them so please make sure that you put efforts in ensuring that you understand these uh this part and also one of the other things that um we are also i'm also noticing with our learners is that there is a wastage of time now guys please know how much time to spend on each and every question if you look at this paper it was out of 150 and then it was written in i think it's two hours so if you say um if you look at your question paper they will even guide you that it's supposed to be uh, for how many minutes so this is what you need to do for you to understand how many minutes are you going to spend on that particular part of the written income now for them to get this 45 minutes what they did they took um the marks they said um 55 divide by the total mark which is 150 and then they multiplied that by uh, the number of minutes that you're going to write this test for which is 120 now you see it's almost approximately 44 it's 44 minutes the difference is one mark but that's how they get it now for you to know how many minutes should you spend on your uh written income note this is what you can do you change um this 55 will be represented by 10 marks so that you don't waste too much time on just one note because i noticed that most of our accounting students they waste time so now when it's like this if i say 10 remember that part that i was doing is 10 marks if i say 10 divided by 150 um it's, it's telling me that i should be spending eight minutes on that written income note and this is the highest amount of time that you can spend on that note so please be wise in the usage of your time okay now um i'm done with this lesson if you want me to personally tutor you to help you to understand accounting at your own personal level at your own personal uh, pace you are more than welcome to make use of the details that are available at the description of this video and i promise you that we will make your accounting problems a thing of the past don't forget to share this video don't forget to like don't forget to comment if you think that this video has helped you comment let me know how you feel about it if there's any way that you want me to improve or any topic that you want me to uh, maybe to deal with the next time please tell me in the comment section and i will do you because i am your accounting servant with that out of the way thank you so much for watching may god richly bless you shalom